Um, an individual body then is a survival machine for the genes that rise inside it. A survival machine in the sense that it exists, everything about it is geared, is programmed, is made for the sole purpose of passing on genes to the next generation. The animal has to survive to pass on the genes. It has to attract a mate. It has to be an attractive pheasant, for example, to attract a mate in order to pass genes on. It has to be a good parent. It has to build a good nest. Uh, it has to do whatever the species has to do, whether it's flying or swimming or digging or climbing, burrowing, running, hunting, running away, grazing, browsing. It has to do whatever the species does in a practical sense. But whatever the species does, it's always ultimately doing the same thing, which is preserving the genes that lie inside it and passing them on to the future. The difference between successful genes and unsuccessful genes is that successful ones get passed on through an indefinite number of generations. Unsuccessful ones die in the bodies of the animals that die because they've got bad genes in them. So, a, an animal body is a machine for preserving and propagating the genes that ride inside it, and animal bodies are very good at that, because the ones that are good at it are the ones that uh, are, are descended from an unbroken line of ancestors that have been good at it. So, every living creature contains the genes of an unbroken, a literally unbroken line of successful ancestors, every single one of whom succeeded in living to adulthood, every single one of whom achieved at least one heterosexual copulation. Trivial, but obvious, but it's a, it's a profound truth. So the genes that we living creatures inherit, we inherit from an unbroken line of successful ancestors which uh, were successful because they contained good genes. The ones that were not successful didn't pass on the genes. Their genes are no longer, no, are no longer with us. Um, and you generalize from that and you say, well, then why would an animal care for um, other animals than its own offspring? Why would it care for its nephews and nieces, its brothers and sisters? Because statistically, they have a good chance of containing copies of the same genes. Why do worker ants work? They're sterile. They don't pass on any genes but they contain copies of the genes that the queen passes on and the drone and males pass on. So the worker bodies are programmed by copies of queen genes to take whatever steps are necessary to help the queen to uh, reproduce. It all fits, it's all, it's all, it's all elegant, it all makes, makes perfect sense. That none of those ideas are right. Those are all um, inherent in the neo-Darwinian synthesis of the 1930s. But I put it in that sort of language, that kind of the rhetoric of survival genes, the rhetoric of immortal genes leaping down the generations, casting aside a succession of mortal genes. Um, that was the kind of, 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 of rhetoric in which I expressed what was actually the, 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 the standard model of, of, of neo-Darwinism.